All right, so now it is time for us to create some sort of a global store, a global state where we can add our weather. If you go back to the view models and go to the add weather view model, you can see that over here we're passing or we're calling the save function. And eventually, when the save function does return, it gives you access to the weather view model. We still have to call the save function and we still have to use the add weather view model. This is something that we are going to use in our add city screen. As you can see in the add city screen, we don't have an instance of add weather view model. So let's go ahead and first create an instance of the add weather view model. You can see that we have declared an instance, an object of add weather view model. And now we can go about saving our weather. So I can go ahead and say add weather view model dot save. And it is going to fire a completion, which is going to give me a weather, which will be a weather view model. Another thing that we need to change is that whenever we type in the name of the city, it should go to the add weather view model dot city property. So I can go ahead and say over here add weather view model dot city. And this means that anytime we're going to write something in a text box or a text field, the add weather view model city property is going to be populated. This means that we don't really need this city property that we declared on line number 13, so we can go ahead and delete it. Great. Now, once the save button is actually clicked, we fire the add weather view model dot save and save the model. But the question is, well, where do we save the model? And for that purpose, we have to create some sort of a global store. So in the global state folder, I'm going to go ahead and create a new file. And I will call it store. This will be our global state, which will be recognized throughout the application. I'm going to go ahead and create a class called store, which will be of type observable object. Next, I'm going to go ahead and create a list, an array of weather view model. Also, I'm going to go ahead and add a function, which is going to say, add weather, where you can pass in the weather, which will be of type weather view model. Finally, we can go ahead and say weather list dot append, and we can append the weather. Perfect. Now we want to inject this store object as a global object. This means we have to go back to our weather app, Sif UI app. And as you can see over here that we are calling our home screen, which is the weather list screen, but we're not injecting an environment object. So let's go ahead and do that. And go ahead and create an instance of the store and pass it there. This means that all the different views that will be the child views along with the weather list screen will be able to use the store object. Now, let's go back to our add city screen. You can see that in the add city screen, we don't really have access to the weather object itself. So what we are going to do is I'm going to go ahead to the add city screen and create an instance of the store. Now, once we have the instance of the store, we can simply go ahead and call store dot add weather and pass in the weather. And after adding the weather, we can also go ahead and say presentation mode dot wrap value dot dismiss so that our modal can be dismissed. Now, one other thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that for the add city screen, you are injecting the store inside the Xcode previews. So right over here, what I have done is you can see that I am injecting the store as an environment object. If you don't do that, then your Xcode previews are not going to work correctly. The other thing that we need to do in our code 
is remember when I said that in the weather app Swift UI, kind of like your root of your application, we are injecting the store and we are injecting the store to the weather list screen view. This means that the weather list screen view, as well as all the other controls or views inside the weather list screen view, will have access to the store. But they have to be the child of weatherless screen. If you look at our code for the weatherless screen, when we are presenting the app city screen, when we are presenting the setting screen, these are not really the, the child or children of weatherless screen. These are different models. So when you do that, the environment object that you have created, which is store, is not really available to the app city screen and it's not available to the setting screen. So we need to inject that particular environment variable right here. Now, how do we do it? Well, in the weather list screen, we're going to go ahead and create an environment object, var store, just like in any other view. This store property is automatically going to get populated when the page actually loads, when the page runs. And then we can go ahead and call dot environment object and pass in the store. This means that when you launch the add city screen, it will have access to that particular store object. And we also have to make sure that when we are using Xcode previews, then we will go ahead and pass it over here also. Perfect. Let's go ahead and build this. Resume it. And let's go ahead and run the application. Even though we will not be able to see the weather for any of the cities because we haven't got to that point yet. I'm going to go ahead and add Houston and we're going to say save. And there we go. It simply dismisses. It doesn't really show us any weather or anything like that. So our next step would be to make sure that whenever the weather is added or the city is added, we find the weather based on the city and then we take that weather and then display it on the screen. So let's go ahead and do that in the next lecture.